KC2 IRV here again, testing a uh, another OCXO. This is a 10 megahertz OCXO I picked up off of eBay. It's a Trimble 10 megahertz OCXO sine wave output, 12 volt DC powered. Um, model 65256. I can't show you the other side of it because, well, you can see how I have it hooked up. It's a little precarious. I've had it on for about five hours, let it stabilize. I'm using a little 100k pot as a as a uh, way to give my uh, VFC, you know, get get the the voltage uh, control to the unit. But I was talking with a another ham who wants to implement a frequency offset on his simulcast system using the RTCMs. Now. Well, most commercial transmitters that are built for simulcast have a frequency offset built in into them. Now, without going into great detail, the frequency offset can be used for a couple of things. One is to allow the audio to kind of roll through in areas where there's overlap and possible, you know, in areas that are uh, no capture as well in the overlap areas and allows the it gives a more pleasant effect depending on the frequency offset you have um there's actually a guy i should say a, a ham club that has a great explanation of this on their website for their simulcast repeater system so i'll i'll put a link to that in the description but um that is uh Something he would like to implement, but his transmitter does not have the ability to program in a frequency offset. So what he's going to do is use a 10 megahertz OCXO and one of his sites and offset it manually by offsetting the OCXO by a certain amount, which is more than doable. If you have an extremely accurate OCXO, um, then this can be done reliably. So I picked this off of eBay, up, up, up off of eBay for 20 bucks, inexpensive unit, um, and it was attractive because it's a Trimble, true Trimble unit, it's used, but it runs off of 12 volts DC, and it, uh, has a nice sine wave output, uh, output of about, uh, 3 volts, Peak to peak, if I remember correctly. So, anyway, I have it going into my frequency counter here, which I have tied to my external GPS standard. And you can tell, I have it on the highest resolution I can, but you can tell it's it's output in 10, 10 megahertz. Um, and then if I increase the resolution, you can tell it's fluctuating by about 0 0.01 megahertz. It pops from 0, 0 to 0, 1 every so often. And um, it's been like this for about, once it's stabilized, it's been like this by for a couple of hours. So it's, I mean, it should be more than warm and stable. So, and this is, this is what it's been doing. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any voltage divider. Normally I put a voltage divider on this to shorten the, uh, the adjustment uh, window in order to make the pot more accurate and less susceptible to thermal issues and another thing when building something like this like an oscillator the your trim pot should be mounted as close to the OCXO as possible in fact uh, ideally right up against it because then the OCXO will raise the temperature of that pot up above the ambient because temperature will affect the value of this pot so if this is far away from your OCXO and it's subject to the effects of ambient temperature in, in in the environment it will change and it will cause your OCXO to change frequency as well so anyway I wrote something up really quick to give you an idea of uh, what we're dealing with here so I did some you know very 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 simple math so at uh, a times five frequency up you know, 50 megahertz, you know, 6 meter band, essentially, um, we have a 0.05 megahertz error for a fluctuation 
of 0 0.01. So this is fluctuating 0 0.05 megahertz. And in a simulcast situation, this is an, this is not going to be noticeable at all. Um, so up from there, we have, you know, times it by 50, which gives us 500 megahertz uh, frequency. Um, we have 0.5 hertz of error, which, once again, not going to be noticeable. And then we times that... Uh, of course, again, by 500, we get 5 gigahertz, and that's now 5 hertz error, which then it's going to be noticeable, but uh, I don't think we're going up to 5 gigahertz <laughs> with this, so I would say the highest possible usage for this would be up in the 900 megahertz range, and it's going to be slightly less than 1 hertz of error, 1 hertz. So you could definitely get a nice stable offset that will be stable even with the aging of the oscillator by manually offsetting it with one of these units. And um, you can make this even more stable by placing it in a little box and putting in some insulation around it to make it even more stable. Um, these units, the one of the big things you want to, if you're going to use one of these as a frequency standard for transmitter, is your DC power needs to be, one, it needs to be very clean which means decoupling caps. You know, a lot of people seem to forget about the RF decoupling caps on regulators. Regulators are semiconductors. They can cause issues with in RF environments. By, you know, by, uh, by way of RF, by, you know, creating their own RF or uh, being, uh, you know, being recipients of it. So you want to decouple, decouple, decouple. Um, so... And then the other thing is, is to make sure the voltage is stable. And ideally, you want to put your regulator, you, and you don't want to just, and that's another thing, you don't want to just connect this directly to your power source. This needs to have a regulator, a good, um, accurate linear regulator that is, once again, close to the OCXO, so that, and placed in, the, in, in some type of enclosure, so that the temperature of everything is raised up above the ambient, so the temperature will not affect the uh, frequency output. Now, I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to play with this right now. Um, right now, this unit's drawing 12.2, uh, I have it set at 12.2 volts, and it's drawing 180 milliamps, or 0.18 amps. It draws initially about 1.9 amps on startup. Um, and then it rapidly drops down. This is where it settles out to when the oven's fully warm. So let's uh, let's play with our let's play with our voltage here and look at the output. So I'm going to decrease the voltage. I've now decreased it to about 10.9 volts. And uh, at 10.9 volts, let's look at our output. It's dropped quite a bit. Quite a bit. Okay, now I'm going to raise the voltage up. Now we're going to watch this. I'll bring it back to 12.2, where it was. Okay, let's back up to 12.2. It should eventually bring itself back to where it was. Which is pretty much there. Yep. Okay, now let's go higher in voltage. I'll go up to, say, 13. Up to 13 volts. Look at that. So, this is outlining the importance of a stable voltage. Very stable. You need a very stable voltage. So, I'll go back to 12.2. And let's say I'll go up to, like, Let's go, say, 12.5. See, even at 12.5, I've got a uh, change of 0 0.06. Which at 50 megahertz, it's not really going to matter much. And even at 500 megahertz, it isn't going to matter that much. It will still it will matter, though. 
Um, so if we go down, uh, there's 12.3, which is just a tenth of a hertz, or I'm sorry, a tenth of a volt. And it still makes a difference. Not a whole lot. Then we go back down to 12.2. And there we go. So you need to have a stable, very stable voltage on this OCXO. Very, very stable. Uh, don't don't cheap out on it. You know, get a get a very high quality linear regulator. Um so that's that's the story. So yeah, it's it's you think you know when it comes to uh precision frequency references like this, you know, it's you don't want to really skimp out. You know, try try not to pay you know pay attention to detail. Um I mean these units it's it's nice that these units are available now on eBay and stuff for a minimal cost, and they provide a very uh, high quality uh, output. Nice thing is that since these are used, generally OCXOs get better with time as far as their aging characteristics. So that is one thing you have in your favor, and they're cheap enough that you can buy a couple of these and have them as backups. So, uh, that's all for now, and uh, I'll uh, catch you later with the next video.